arrests, scandals, and straight up career changes. Those are just some of the paths that these American Idol contestants face after disappearing from the limelight. Hey guys, it's your girl Catherine for Talent Recap, and today I'm gonna take you on an American Idol tour across the country, but this time I'm bringing you 10 American Idol contestants who have vanished from the scene. So stay tuned in and follow along so you always know what's hot. First stop, we're headed to West Virginia, to a prison. Yeah, that's right. Antonella Barba. So we're starting off with a little bit of a wild story here. At 19 years old, the singer auditioned for season six of American Idol. She made it all the way to the top 16 and her fans even referred to themselves as Fantanellas. But what happened after Idol is truly shocking. It seriously damaged your chances of remaining here another week. Sorry. In 2010, Barbara was charged with two misdemeanors for shoplifting, but it doesn't stop there. In 2018, she was arrested on a felony charge for distributing more than 100 grams of heroin. She was indicted on 11 federal charges and was sentenced to three years and nine months in prison. Barbara's mother and legal team said her elimination from Idol and move to Los Angeles was the leading cause of her downfall. Well, the good news is you're attractive. Well, we know that, yes. The bad news is it didn't work. So while she's disappeared from the public for some obvious reasons, I do have hope that she can begin to head in the right direction after her release. Moving on from prison, our next stop is Lacanto, Florida. <whistles> Bo Bice. Do you guys remember Bo? He was the runner up to Carrie Underwood in season four and he was known for his country rock persona and long, luscious hair. The winner of American Idol 2005 is... Carrie Underwood! After the show, he released his album, The Real Thing. But apparently, it wasn't real enough. <laughs> Due to his limited success, he was dropped by RCA Records. And from 2013 to 2018, he did try to take the lead on music again and was the lead singer for a jazz rock band called Blood, Sweat and Tears, which is probably what he had to experience to get back into the music game. Oh my God! Oh, oh my God! As you can tell from his Instagram, these days Bo keeps a low profile and he spends most of his time with his wife and kids. But he still has time to perform some acoustic gigs at bars but as you can see, he definitely dimmed from the spotlight. Next up, we're headed to Nashville, Tennessee, the home of country music. So grab your cowboy hats and saddle up for this next one. <laughs> also a contestant on season four of American Idol was Lindsay Cardinelli. Now, this contestant story is probably one you didn't see coming. It's like thunder, lightning. The country singer has pursued other passions that don't align with music at all. Since leaving American Idol in 2005, Lindsay has divided her time between singing and her passion of competing in rodeos. Yes, she's even won several competition, and Lindsay even participated at the World Series of Team Roping in Texas. And like I always say, if you're gonna quit singing to be a rodeo roper, you might as well be the best. But actually, in 2015, she did attempt to get back into the music scene, although it didn't quite reach the public. No. See, I think 30 million TV sets in America had their volume turned down simultaneously during that song. Today, Lindsay is a proud mom and shows off her growing family on Instagram. A rodeo champ and an Instagram mom? I think she disappeared from showbiz for some good reasons. I mean, she even dresses up her babies like little cowboys. Yeehaw! It's so cute, you have to check it out. Now, we're off to Los Angeles, California, home of the stars. Next on the list is Corey Clark. Okay, now this one is kind of scandalous. This singer is best known for being disqualified in season two after failing to disclose his arrest for battery. Four days after he became one of the final 32 American Idol contestants, he was charged by the Kansas District Court and was sentenced to six months of probation. 
but it gets better. I'm sweating, dude, like I'm about half a ton right about now. All right. <laughs> Two years later, he came back into the headlines claiming that he was having an intimate relationship with Paula Abdul during the show. It felt like, hey, she, you know, she let me know, like she it feels like she's hitting on me a little bit. And, and I liked it, you know what I'm saying? I was like, wow. Yeah, the whole thing was wild. And of course, Paula denied all the allegations. After all that died down, it was reported that he went back to college and became an Uber driver in the state of California. How you doing, man? Did you say to your friends? How you doing, guys? Love you guys. I mean, I wouldn't want to hop in that Uber, but if he has a good rating, then go for it. I don't know about that. I don't, I don't think they're ready for that, man. <laughs> I mean, hopefully now he's staying out of trouble and no longer creates relationship fantasies with 80s pop stars. And that's the end of that one. So I think I'm gonna hang out a bit here in California. Speaking of idol stars who now drive for Uber, do you guys remember Brian Dunkelman? Well, for most of you, I bet his name isn't really ringing a bell. But Brian actually hosted the inaugural season of American Idol alongside Ryan Seacrest. Ah uh, yes, that is indeed what friends are for. Unfortunately, we have come to discover that his life was in a whirlwind during his brief time on the show. Incredibly unhappy on the show from day one. I didn't like that kind of television. Maybe I got a little bit of a big head and I think I pissed some people off. Recently, he opened up about some serious substance abuse issues he battled while hosting Idol. He also admitted that he and Seacrest did not get along whatsoever. And if that wasn't bad enough, he also dealt with suicidal thoughts during this period of time. All of a sudden, my manager never returned another call of mine. And then I went three years without working. Drank too much, gambled too much. Drugs. Years later, he decided to pursue a career in stand-up comedy, which wasn't very successful. Things are going well for me. <laughs> after his divorce in 2019, he made headlines after choosing to become an Uber driver to support his son and has been doing that ever since. Today, he says he's just trying to be the best dad that he can be, and I think that's very commendable. Hey, the spotlight just isn't for everyone, but I'm just glad he chose to work toward the most important thing in his life. So good for you, Brian. Where is Simon Cowell's star? The next name I announce will put a smile right on your face. That's right, it's William Hung. Over a decade ago, he took the world by storm with his hilarious rendition of Ricky Martin's She Bangs. She Bangs! She Bangs! <laughs> Oh baby, when she moves, she moves, I go crazy cause His awful singing but infectious personality left us and the judges cracking up. But as we know, he never made it past his audition. So what happened to him after he disappeared from Idol? Well, interestingly, and randomly, he's now a financial coach who concentrates on helping professional card players secure their funds for the future. Yes, he's definitely given up on singing, but he seems to be doing great in his new career. I mean, he even wrote a book to share his financial advice. And you know what? It ended up being a good thing that Simon shut him down because he seems to have found his calling. One of actually the worst auditions we've had this year, if I'm being honest. Mm. Seriously. Mm. I mean, everything about it was grotesque. Oh, oh, stop it. And now we all know who to go to to get our money right after making some questionable choices in Atlantic City. Now let's take it across the country to New York City. Sanjaya Malakar. Now Sanjaya is hands down one of the most memorable contestants in all of Idol history, but not for the best reason. He's considered by many to be the worst Idol finalist. And I seem to find the happiness I see when we're out together. And honestly, the way people kept voting for him week after week, kind of bullying. Except for the girl that was crying for him that one time in the audience. She was completely serious. Sanjaya actually made it to the top seven on season six. And funny enough, ratings actually dropped after his elimination. After Idol, he made a number of television appearances. It's Sanjaya, Sanjaya himself and was at the center of countless parodies. Today, however, he has been reported to be a bartender in New York City and still takes singing gigs from time to time. But you know what? Looking back, was he really that bad? I mean, go back and watch some of the clips. Like, he really wasn't that bad. I kind of liked him, actually. 
Okay, now I'm here in the Windy City. Jim Verraros. This singer faced adversity early on as he was the show's first gay contestant. With you. He was actually told to remove all references to his sexuality from his blog during season one, but he did end up coming out while on the American Idol tour. And I know this was back in season one, but Idol has attempted to conceal the true identities of contestants for years. I mean, if you remember, they did the same thing with Adam Lambert. Jim placed ninth in the inaugural season and gained a bit of popularity from the LGBTQ community after the show. After appearing in a number of low budget film projects, Jim kept more of a low profile and even took a stab at fashion design. Fun fact, he actually remained good friends with Kelly Clarkson after the show, and he even helped to design the headpiece she wore at her 2013 wedding. Now that's pretty amazing if you ask me. Today, he has his own accounting and financing practice, and he's even engaged. So I can't wait to see what he designs for his own wedding. Next up, Jessica Sierra. She's yet another Idol contestant who has faced issues with the law. She was described by Simon Cowell as one of the strongest female vocalists to appear on the show. And after all the mud However, she placed 10th on the show's fourth season. Following her time on Idol, the once highly regarded singer faced a number of legal issues. In 2007, she was arrested after throwing a glass at a fellow bar patron and during her booking, cocaine was also found in her purse. Jessica then appeared on Celebrity Rehab before being arrested yet again. This time around, she served a jail sentence, plus 12 months in rehab. And to top it all off, she was even threatened with the distribution of a homemade sex tape that was aimed to be released around the time of Idol's seventh season. As you can see, the girl was really having a rough go at it. I hope she's been able to turn her life around for the better. Last on the list is Taylor Hicks. In 2006, the then 29-year-old won against Katherine McPhee. who I think we can all agree is considerably more famous. And we've seen it time and time again that on many occasions, the most successful Idol contestants didn't win the show at all. Since Idol, Taylor has attempted to release a few albums. However, he was dropped from his label in 2008 after inconsistent record sales. Today, he is the co-owner of Saw's Juke Joint in Birmingham, Alabama. And this I really love because the record company didn't give him a place to sing, so he bought his own. To be honest, he really sounds like he's living the dream. And while he's no longer centered that heavily in the public eye, he will be making an appearance in the romantic comedy Stars Fell on Alabama. And some of his original songs will actually be featured in the film. So I think it's fair to say that he didn't completely disappear from the industry, but for a while, he was probably having too much fun at his restaurant. I would eat there anytime. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little tour. Do you guys agree with my list? Let us know down in the comments if there are any other Idol contestants you think fell off the face of the earth. You can follow me at underscore Catherine DiMeglio on Instagram, and be sure to follow Talent Recap on all platforms, and hit that notification bell so you always know what's hot. Now, as they have all disappeared, so will I. Bye guys. Hey, what are you doing tonight? Well, I think you should hit the subscribe button down below and then we can talk.